Welcome to Pastor Talk Podcast. I am Pastor Tim. This is Pastor Joe. We're here with you, and we're thankful that you're joining us. And uh, welcome, Joe. And I want to say, first of all, nice hat, bro. Thank you. Yeah, we are wearing the same hat. <laughs> we're wearing the same hat. You're wearing the hat and the shirt. Yes. If you don't know, Men's Retreat's coming up. This is the official hat of Men's Retreat, which you can get your own hat if you're signing up for Men's Retreat. Or we have a table in the lobby, too. So Men's Retreat, August 11th through the 13th. But this podcast episode is not about men's retreat. We're going to talk about using your gifts. True or false, Joe, if you don't use your gifts, you'll lose your gifts. That's not true. Okay. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> true or false? Not wait, all people wait, have like, gifts. Did you like prepare that? Is that the whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I all didn't right, tell him we're doing true and false. on this episode. This whole episode is true and false. <laughs> at, at <laughs> just true and false questions? <laughs> true and false. Not everybody has gifts. Okay, now I feel under a lot of pressure. Um, there is no wrong answer. Except false. the wrong answer. False. Okay, that is false. So everybody has giftings. And the question today is how and where and when and who should use them? I think that's all the... <laughs> The who's and the why's? True. True. <laughs> false. False. Okay, we're done with the true false. Probably but not. the big question is, within church, there's a lot to do. And not just in the church building, but the church body, there is work to be done within the Great Commission. And so how do you figure out what your gift is? And then how do you go about using it? Especially if you've never volunteered before or done a ministry role or even within the job that you're at or leading a small group or witnessing, evangelizing, all the gifts, where do you start? I think that one thing that's difficult for people when they think of gifts is they're only thinking about Sunday morning. Right. And there's only so many jobs and there's only so many things to do on Sunday morning. And there are uh, people that are gifted in in music, right? And uh, there are people that are gifted in teaching children. And so for people like that, uh, ha- whose gift is, is very obvious, uh, obviously useful on a Sunday morning, it's a no-brainer for them. Right. Would oh, you? Sorry. Would, <laughs> I'm putting on Do Not Disturb. It's so loud. I'm trying to put on Do Not Disturb. Okay, go ahead. Um, it's, it's a no-brainer for them, for those people that have the gifts that are very easily recognizable. But then it's it's harder for other people, maybe for for people who um, have gifts that the positions are all filled already and there's just there's there's no more room or people whose whose gifts are administration or different things and it's not is not easily apparent. And I think um, I think that's what what gives people a lot of trouble right off the bat. And you'll have the you know, church announcements um, are always kind of geared towards a few different things, like uh, children. Right? It, right. It, there's always <laughs> volunteers needed for children, especially out here in Santan Valley, where uh, all of us have too many children. I, you know, speak for yourself. I am speaking for myself. <laughs> uh, and, and we do need volunteers, by the way. <laughs> we do need volunteers for children's <laughs> ministry. So contact Carrie. Right. Uh, Mike's on sabbatical right now. Don't contact him. He won't get back to you. <laughs> Um, he better not. Yeah, I hope he doesn't. He's doing a good job so far. He's like three days in. Yeah. Um, but that's a good point because when you think about Sunday morning, for example, most churches look like they're they're good and they don't need help and everyone's doing stuff. And there's one aspect where we know we always need people to step up and volunteer, even though it looks like someone's at the cafe and someone's up front and someone's on the worship team. There's always people that we need to cover vacations, to allow people to take Sundays off, you know, to cycle through so we don't overwork our volunteers, which we don't want to do. And so there's that aspect that if you have any of those gifts, then speak up and ask to be on the worship team or to lead kids. And things like just being friendly, right, is some would say that's a a gift, but I mean, it's it's really not. If you can stand at a door and just welcome people in the name of the Lord and, and give them coffee, like you can serve, but there's also the aspect like you were referring to that if if Sunday morning is not something you feel comfortable doing, there's other ways to get involved too. I think that when you look at the staff that is on uh, here at LifePoint, every single one of the pastors, um, everybody that is on staff was already doing what they're doing 
as a volunteer in some in some manner. Right. Uh, I was on the worship team. Um, I was uh, uh, Blake. Pastor Blake was uh, in children's ministry and doing the whole telling. I wasn't here, but I know he was volunteering before he came on as a pastor. Pastor Mike was in youth before he came on as a pastor. Uh, you were uh, chairman of the elder board. Yeah, you were on the elder board for a long time. Yeah. So um, everybody on staff was plugged in as a volunteer first. Right. And sometimes it's not easy to find that spot. Um, sometimes it takes getting involved in things, seeing how things work, and then seeing a the need that uh, you can fill, that God has given you a passion to fill. And um, a, a lot of the ministries that have come out of LifePoint, or there's a lot of things that are, people are doing that are not Sunday morning. They're leading other groups. Um, they're uh, LifePoint Lodge, right? That yeah. was born out of a passion to raise up um, young boys, right. right, in the Lord to teach them what it means to be a godly man. We have other ministries that have come out. Uh, life care, of that. life care, Was right? A big one for helping those in need, seeing a need in the community, and saying, "Let's start something where we can serve those in need." And that's what we love as pastors is seeing people that have passion and saying that, and not just like, "Hey, go, Joe, do that." I have an idea. Why don't you do it? But I'm willing to do it myself because I'm passionate about it, and I'm going to use my giftings in order to see it through. And we're like, great, like, bless you. We'll give you resources and help and promote yeah. it. But those are the best types of ministries and how they start is based on passion. And that's kind of where I wanted to get to is the fact that if God's given you a passion for something, then it's for a reason. It's not just to critique those that don't have that same passion. It's to use that passion to do good, to, to serve. I mean, we have people, uh, disaster relief right now, Samaritan's Purse, right? Like they have a passion for uh, going and serving those that are affected by, by tragedy. And, and that's not something like, oh, like we need 50 to 100 people to go do that. And we're going to force you to have passion for, for that. No, like, but if that touches your heartstrings and you, you want to help, then we have an avenue where you can get plugged in and do that. And with a big, like we have just a big offering of things that there, there's got to be something that you can get plugged in and use your giftings for and your passions for. And if there's not, maybe you should create it. Maybe you should use that passion in your job, in your family, to start something in your community. Like whatever that passion is, see it through. Don't, don't squelch that passion and don't just let other people do it. But God's giving you that for a reason. And, and sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out. It, it's interesting when we grow up and you go through school and these different things, and then you all of a sudden you're going to college. Well, the, the narrative that the world kind of throws at you is we well, have to do something you're interested in. Right. You, oh, you, you're interested in computers? Well, go get a degree in computer science. You're interested in cars? Go learn how to fix cars or what, whatever it may be, like whatever you're inter interested in. And what I've found um, as I've had different jobs and I've seen other people in different jobs, it, it matters way more how that job plays out than what the interest is. Right. So it's it's way more about what energizes you. Like what has God given you a passion for? And, uh, and the opposite of that is what drains you. Right. And I'm not saying that God's not going to ask you to do something that drains you sometimes, but what he's made you for and the the place that he's uh, he calling you to fit in is going to be something that you're that he's given you a passion and energize you for, and it may be a lot different than you think it is at the beginning. Yeah. You may think, "Oh, I have a, a passion for music, and so I'm going to join the worship team." But you didn't know that God had given you uh, a, a, an ener a passion for teaching, right? That that yeah. was something that you never even tried. Yeah. And um, I, I find that many times you just have to get in and get involved. Yeah, do something. And then uh, when you do that, then you, you might move to something else. You might get involved in a different way. And that's good. Yeah. That's okay. What you shouldn't do is just sit back and not serve and, and not use the gifts that God has given you because that's a net loss Yeah. for Everybody, it's a net loss for the church because they are you're, they're losing out on um, on value because yeah. each and every one of us have value and we don't want to fit 
uh, you know, round pegs and square holes, but uh, you got to find it, it's, it's work to find the spot for yourself. Yeah. And I thought about this recently is that, you know, when you're thinking about what to do, not just with your gifts, but too often as Christians, we would just wait around for these multiple confirmations to do stuff. But things the Bible has already commanded you to do, it's not a question of if you should do it, but it may be a question of how you should do it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of if you should serve and use your gifts, but we're talking about how you can, right? It's not a matter of if you should give 10% and tithe, it's a matter of how and, and where should you give that money to, you know, hopefully to your local church that you're plugged into. And it's not a matter of, you know, if you should love your neighbor, if you should serve your community and how forgive, yeah. it's how. And so that's where we can seek discernment from God and say, okay, I, I can't just give money to every single person, but as the Holy Spirit prompts you, like he's going to highlight people to maybe give money to or to pray for. Uh, and like, that's where we're Holy Spirit led. And it's, it's not just the question, well, unless God gives me an open vision of this person I should give to, I'm just going to sit on my hands and do nothing. Right. That puts us in this, this cycle of just apathy, waiting for these huge things that, I mean, that's just not how God speaks. He's given us his word that, that gives us a lot of instruction. And so most of the time what I find in my life and in, in just Christianity in general is that we just take that as optional. We take those commandments as, ah, if you feel like it, if you have time, if you have the money, then yeah, you probably should do it. Instead of, this is my rule book for life. This is my, my map. This tells me where I'm going. This tells me how to follow God. I'm going to do that to my, the best of my abilities. And I'm going to give and I'm going to serve and I'm going to do these things. And I'm going to seek God for open doors in my life. That's what I've seen when I started serving here. It was just a matter of open doors over time. Like I started with, you know, I remember the first time I gave a, an offering message and I was scared out of my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, this was years and years ago now. Just a five-minute offering message. I'm like, man, I just, I just can't do this, right? And for doing that and leading small groups and being on the elder, like the goal was never to be a pastor for me. I'll, I'll tell you that straight up. But it was just through serving and walking through those open doors that God led me down. And now I can look back and see his hand upon that, how he, he didn't just say like, oh, tomorrow you're going to be a pastor, right? It'd be like, no way, that's not happening. But the journey, right? You look back and you see the journey, you see God's hand on it through our obedience, right? If he opens a door and you're just like, I don't want to do that, then he's, he's not going to force you, right? He might open it up again in a few months, or he might give another person the opportunity, right? And that's where our free will comes in. And that's where we have to follow God and be obedient to those, that calling upon our life. Um, and so don't feel like, oh, I missed all these opportunities. Like there's always opportunities. Well, Every day is an opportunity. <laughs> I think when we think of gifts, and, and what God has given us a passion for, I think it's important to remember that it's not like he didn't call some of us to evangelize. He didn't call some of us to pray. He didn't call some of us to give. He, he calls all of us to do that, yeah. all of us to do those things. And the, the question really is, how do we do those things? Right. And what does that look like? Because that will look different for each person. It's just like... It, uh, in this world, we all have to have a job, like to have money. Yeah. Like you have to earn money or else you will have no money and then you can't live. Then, but the, it, you don't all have the same job, right. right? You all earn money in different ways. And that's just, that's a given. That's the way we think about it. But if we think about it, uh, those things as uh, the, right, the earning money, the, the essential goal of the Christian faith is, 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 uh, preaching Jesus, the gospel to others, of praying for others, um, of giving, of, you know, all the things that that make up um, uh, being a Christian. It's it's how you do those things. Yeah. And every single person will look, uh, it'll look really different. I mean, just to think outside the box here, maybe you're real passionate about um, computers, right? And lots of times you're like, well, that... How, how would that even play into evangelism? I don't know. Let all your neighbors know, hey, if you need computer help, uh, I'll, I'll help you. I'll come over to your house and I'll do that for you. And then when you're there, talk to them about Jesus. Yeah, pray for them. Like that's, that would be an opportunity 
for them when you're helping them that you would not otherwise have. You right. can pray over them when they're at your house. And uh, and sometimes those things will happen so much more naturally than you think as long as you're thinking about it. Yeah. And um, I really like what you said about, you know, when you're in school, in college, you just sometimes you just pick a degree. You don't even know what you're going to do, what you want to do. Some people know from an early age, we just start you know, start down a business and maybe it'll end up in a different field, but you just, you have to go to school. So you pick something, Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to work when you're 16 to 18. So you, you just pick a job. It doesn't mean you're going to be there forever, except I was there for 24 years on my first job. So <laughs> I'm kind of the unique case, but um, you just pick something and you do it. And so I think when you, when you see the options available to you in a church or in, in your community, like just start doing something, just start serving on a life care day, just start serving in the cafe, greeting people at the door. I mean, you don't have to be worship minded to be on your team. Like you can Oh, there's there's, point a camera. there's things you, on my team that you literally can teach them to do stuff. Fit any person. Right. And if you don't know, you can learn, you can be me mentored by somebody who knows it and, and learn a, a skill um, if that's something of interest as well. You know, I uh, I remember when I first got my bachelor's degree and I got it in English and this was in 2009. And so it's the it's the recession, and so there's no jobs anywhere. And I was really looking in. Uh, I really wanted to get into editing jobs. I really wanted to uh, some sort of writing thing. And I was realizing real quickly that uh, in Arizona, that's not a great field to be in because uh, there's no publishing houses and there's no jobs at the moment anyway. So after a while of looking for jobs, I just started applying everywhere. Um, and I remember I really didn't want to work in a restaurant. That was at the bottom of my list. And on my way home, I applied at uh, Chili's. And it was the last place. And it was just because I couldn't find anything else. And I immediately got an interview and they hired me right away. And what I found was that something that I thought I was going to hate, and I ended up serving for years and years, um, that I ended up really, really enjoying it was a job where I got to talk to people mm -hmm. all the time. And um, and then you build the relationships with the people that come there all the time. And I found that I enjoyed that job. Uh, and it was a better fit for me as a person than uh, I thought it would have uh, would have been. So, uh, And I would have never, never chosen that, except I just got kind of put in there. Yeah. And then I found out that actually – this does work really well for me, uh, for my personality and, and for all of that stuff. So um, it can be that way with serving in the church as well. You don't know, try it. And you know what? Maybe it doesn't work and you you serve somewhere else. But right. I think the mindset should be serve first, right? And then and then see where it goes. Right. And, and I think you alluded to it earlier, but if you're serving in your, in your gifting, it, it, it will fill you up. It's not like this task, like, oh, I have to serve, you know, it shouldn't be that way. And maybe some days it will be, but for the most part, it should be something that gives you life, that fills you up, that makes you excited to be able to do that. Even if you're tired from doing it, you know, I mean, a, a lot of our volunteers on Sunday are the, just the friendliest people. I hear that a lot from new people, like they feel welcomed and it's like these people have taken this role seriously. I don't just stand here and, you know, but they give it their all. They're, they hug you, they, they welcome you in and, and so that, that's where like doing this stuff and I, you know, we both been on life care days and it's very physical. You're just tired afterwards, but you look back and you're like, wow, we did that. Like mm -hmm. we just did it with my family a couple of weeks, you know, last month. And uh, you just look back, you're like, that was, that was awesome mm -hmm. because we did it together. We did it with our community of uh, a church. We helped our community. And uh, I think when you think about serving and giving too often it has this negative uh, mindset to it. Um, and even giving, giving, this isn't about giving money, but like even when you give, we know that you just have, feel that blessing from God because you oh. realize that it's just not yours. And same thing with the, your gifting is not yours either. God gave it to you. And so when you give that, it's the same thing like giving money, you're giving out of the overflow of what God's given you. And it helps you remember that none of what we have is ours. It's all from God. And so we should be thankful. And out of that thankfulness comes the, the, the act of the giving and serving. I, in terms of giving, I am chief among the stingy. I, in my flesh, in myself, I am the stingiest person. I, I don't want to give. I, I just want to see 
uh, you know, what I have saved increase, any decrease is, is a, is a negative feeling for me. And I find that when I give, especially giving uncomfortably, instead of feeling that negative feeling that I always feel when we, uh, make, you know, a purchase or something, um, I feel freedom. And that's a really interesting thing because you're, you're literally saying, God, this is yours. Um, and, in the same way with serving, I feel like people many times think it's going to be a burden, right. that it's going to be a drain. And what you find is that once you've been serving for a while, that you are blessed through serving. Other people are blessed through you, through your serving. And then if you stop serving, like then it, it, then you feel emptier. Because right. that is uh, – we were made to give. Mm-hmm. We were made to serve. And uh, specifically, we were made to serve God and give to God. Yeah. And and so, uh, well, that's one of the dangers of isolation. You know, when when Christians tend to go through life and challenges, they tend to pull back from community and church, which is dangerous. I mean, twenty twenty taught us that isolation kills. It just it kills your your soul as you just go through all this stuff. And so, it, the same way when you start to isolate. You can't serve. Like you, you, you're just thinking about yourself. And I mean, there might be seasons when you have to, but for the most part, like stay plugged in. Even if you're going through tragedy, grief, loss, divorce, like those are moments when that's when we help each other as the church. And the, our, our first instinct in our flesh is to say, no, I just want to isolate and, and stay in the corner and not talk to anyone. I get that. But Sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do. And that's one of those things like, no, you need to push in. You need to give outside yourself and to, and to you know, get surrounded by people that will go through life with you. Uh, and so, you know. I, I find that also when you do serve, that's when you get really connected. That's yeah. when you find the the team, the people that are there that are also passionate about that thing, and you got to find those people and you spur each other on. Yeah. And iron sharpens iron, and uh, that I find is a wonderful thing. Uh, many times, the people that are feeling really disconnected in a church are not serving. Right. And the the serving is is the answer. Like that's that's where you find the people that. Um, you know who who are who are with you, who are for you, and 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 who will go to battle with you and right. for you. Well, I guarantee. You, like I mean, Sunday is so. Every Sunday, I'm just like it goes by so fast. You see people for a second. You don't get to know like how their week was very much. It's just like bam, 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 right. And as much as we try to make room to connect and say hi and stuff, it's still not the best place for that because it goes by so fast. But when you do. When you serve on like life care for four hours with somebody and do a yard with that person, you're going to know that person. Right. Just, you're just going to know it them. It creates a bond that you had that. You have a bond. You cleaned up a yard together. And then when you see that person at church, you'd be like, hey, Joe, I remember, you know, you have that to start, to build upon. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important too. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Let us know uh, questions you have on this or any stories you want to share about serving in the church. And as always, we want to thank our sponsors, Behringer Tools. Summer is a time of projects. You know, we have projects that we're working on nonstop, and we rely on our Behringer Tools to help us get through. I don't know where I'd be without Behringer Tools. No, I mean, the tools that break is a thing of the past. We have strong, confident tools, uh, along with really, Lady Lady Boss. What really gets me with Behringer is the lifetime promise. It's a lifetime promise guaranteed for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. You don't get that with every company or any company. I think they're the only company that promises it for a lifetime guaranteed. But and if there is a company that can match them, it would be Lady Boss. Lady Boss Shoes. Christian right here. Women's Premium Footwear. Premium Footwear. Confidence. Powerful. Confident. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>